Matthew Thomas Alday, widely acknowledged as a visionary and an inspiration to filmmakers everywhere. He has invested much of his life and countless hours into the film industry and has helped bring to life some of our favorite films and characters, such as Harry Potter, Star Wars, The Shining, and Laurel and Hardy's secret Nixon propaganda movies. He has also supported countless other film directors in their time of need. A shoulder to cry on, so to speak. Many of these have openly acknowledged this support. Luminaries such as James Cameron, Steven Spielberg, Peter Jackson, and Stanley Kubrick. This man is truly an endless ocean of creativity and a prime example of a pioneer of his craft. A man that no one could ever accuse of a lackluster work ethic. But recently, his new film, simply titled Asylum Movie, flopped big time on the silver screen due to a whole barrage of controversy, amongst which that the cast and crew were being treated poorly and rumors of a real dead body being used on set. As such, Mr. Alday has recently and relentlessly been harassed by the press and the critics alike. The BFI calling the film an abomination that should never have seen the light of day. In May, a documentary team decided to find out where he was holed up and ask him a few questions regarding his current circumstances and the film's legendary poor standing within the movie community. Are you ready for your interview, Mr. Alday? What? It was today. I need, I need my sunglasses. Where am I? Where are they? Um, you're only wearing them, but they're on your face. Don't you dare patronise me in my home. So do you actually live? You actually live here then? No, this place is a dump. I'm just hiding out here since the chanting of the protesters is keeping me up. Also, I can't pay my mortgage, so they're booting me out. But you got a lot of money, didn't you? you didn't you make millions from your other, your other success? Yeah, but I've spent it. All of it? Yeah, I've spent most of it on hookers, booze and drugs. But the rest of it, I just wasted. Hey, can you believe those actors wanted paying? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, don't worry about the sunglasses I've got to spare. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> um, are you aware that you're, you're wearing two, two pairs of sunglasses then, Mr. Alden? Don't <laughs> with me. How stupid do you think I am? Uh, looks like you've had something of a rough night, Matthew. On the contrary, I've had an excellent night. Best of my life. Uh, still reeling from it. Uh, you mean you're hungover, or...? Nah, man, only the week get hungover. I stay sober through sheer willpower alone. I got good at it while reading this guide on the internet. Some meditation <laughs> Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. So, so why have you been drinking so much recently? To help get the creative juices flowing. I hear when people are under the influence of drugs, they make masterpieces. I figured since my films are all brilliant pieces of art, if I start drinking heavily, I'd be able to come up with something that would just blow people's f brains out. Okay, you've never in the past uh, relied on drugs or alcohol, quite famously. Uh, you've never relied on these things to create your films. So why, why is it all of a sudden that you've decided to turn to these things? Uh, you, are you an, you're an alcoholic, are you? Yeah, hey, I don't use the A word around here. This is just Papa's happy juice, just to ease me through my awesome life. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but something weird happened on the premiere night of my film. I show a capa all rolled out, I'm dressed real smart like, and nobody's there. Not a single person. Hell, I think even the staff bailed. <laughs> what? Where is everyone? Hello? Hello? What? You sure this is the right place? This is this is the right place. I Matthew. think you have an enough of it. This is this so is the right place. Hello? No one's no one's on the balcony. No one's in the seat. Where, where is everyone? Hello? You uh, you you set this up so so you get a reaction out of me, didn't you? For, no. You, making me no, look like a jackass. You know actor. you know that's not the case, Mr. Alder. Are you okay, Matthew? No. Honestly, no one's showing up. Like, is anyone up there? 
Can Matthew, you no, I've already, I've already shown you there's nobody up here, Matthew. There's nobody down there. There isn't anybody down there. There, there, could, there could be that midget couple that was standing outside. Well, they're, yeah. they're not going to be under the seats, are they? I don't know. Like, I don't know how midgets sit. Matthew, I'm so, so sorry. There's, there's not anybody here. There's, even the staff, there's no staff here. Come on, let's get you, let's get you home then. You're right. Oh, he's really upset. He's really, really upset. Uh, I know, Mr. Alder. I was there. I, I filmed it. Do you remember? Hey, what did I say about the A word? I've literally never seen you in my life. I'm not good with faces. Um, I can't remember them too well. Especially during the night time. I think something might be wrong with my eyes. Um, possibly, Matt. Is it because you're wearing sunglasses? And I'd hope you'd remember me. I'm the director for your documentary. We've met a few times. Don't disrespect the specs, man. Uh, wait, my documentary? I don't remember making any documentaries. No, Matthew, I'm, I'm making a documentary about you and your uh, recently failed film um, and the controversy, the controversy behind its production. Hey, you said a lot of long and interesting words there, but before I begin with that, I'm going to address an issue. All right, who said we're on first name basis, huh? I'm not your goddamn friend, you cretin. It's people like you who have a problem with, with society, um, bottom feeders sponging off the hard work and people's successes, like mine. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll address you as Mr. Alday then from now on. I see we're getting to the heart of the issue, Mr. Alday. Um, do you think you have a messiah complex? I'm not going to warn you again about the A word, okay? And I don't have a complex, I'm the least complicated person I know. I'm actually quite perfect in that sense. I'm basically a god amongst men. Well, I'm glad to have gotten that question cleared up. Thank you for that. Um, I need to ask you about the rumours that have been floating around um, about the production of your film uh, that caused a lot of the controversy. Is it true? How, is it true that you used a real body, a real dead body? No, I used a fake one. Uh huh. Um, what about all the testaments from the actors and makeup artists? Claiming that it was it was very cold, uh, there was no pulse, uh, it started to smell. I have no idea what you're talking about. There wasn't even any dead things in my film. I don't mess with that black voodoo man. But there are witness testimonies claiming that they saw you digging up a grave in the local cemetery around that time. I was just, I was just taking a stroll. With a with a shovel. Yeah. Who doesn't? All your accusations are really pressing me. Okay, I need the beer. Okay. Stressful day. Need another beer. Going back to your last film, um, the actors don't seem to have a, a very high opinion of you, the ones that were involved in that film. But I treated them all with the respect that someone on minimum wage deserves to earn. So you didn't even pay your actors a, a full wage? That's right. If they were good enough actors, people would be sending them loads of money. Like, like tipping a waiter at a restaurant. I'm not sure that's quite how it works really, but so, uh, maybe that's not for me to question. Um, I wanted to talk to you about your ethics. What about them? Well, I got an interview with uh, some of your cast members for the documentary, and they had rather a lot to say about about. Ooh, good things I know. Since doing the film, I've had a lot of different job opportunities in the make in like theatrical makeup industry, and it was only then that I realised just how terrible a boss and a director he was. I mean, I knew he wasn't the best, but. He kept on yelling demands at me and he kept asking for thing, me to do things that were impossible. He didn't get to you know, what he wanted to do. He didn't get his point across at all. So, but like the other directors, they, they, they'll tell you what they want you to do. They'll ask you if you can do it and if you can't, they'll improvise. But if you couldn't do it, 
he just he'd go in a strop and he wouldn't he'd sit in the corner and wouldn't talk for ages don't know why it was like working with a five-year-old sometimes ever since the production it's been going downhill if i'm honest very downhill i haven't had a call in months since the since the shoot uh, no one wants to come near me since working with that director i mean why did I even go there? I mean, look, look where I am right now. This is, this is the high, if I'm, if I'm honest, for me. It's the nicest area I've been in in months. And uh, yeah, I've suffered health conditions since working with him, mental conditions since working with him. I've, I've lost part of my mind. I keep talking to myself at night, thinking, why did I take that job? I mean, why did I take that job? Uh, going on to health conditions, uh, Working with him, he didn't give a, a flying rat's ass about how I felt. Uh, fell over countless times, hurt myself. Nope, carry on, he said. We're not sending you to a doctor. I don't care if you've got glass hanging out your leg. I mean, who does that? That's not, that's, that's not human. If someone hurt themselves, you'd take them to the doctor. And ever since then, I've... I'm never working in show business ever again. He's, he's, he's took away all my ambition of being an actor. Not to mention me ripping my beard out for him. The amount of makeup and props I had to go through. Not to mention after the production was done. No, yeah, yeah Reese, you can do it. You can go and clean it off. Do you know how long it took me to get that syrup out of my beard? Do you know how long it took? I had like bowl patches everywhere. I looked like I had rabies. But no, ever since working with that goddamn director, my life has been hell. So I was employed by Mr. Alday as the Health and Safety Executive Officer. Uh, that put me in charge of all of the aspects of health and safety. Uh, however, there was a major issue in that Mr. Alday came onto the set heavily intoxicated. He, he was in the, the worst state I've ever seen anyone and uh, you know I discussed with him about how it may be unsafe for him to be on set working with others that instantly made him very angry in which he uh, then tried to assault me he uh, swung a foul blow but missed and landed headfirst on the ground I then had to administer first aid to a large gash that had formed on his head um, but aside from that the, uh, the the film was a total dud his his characters were poor the the actors were even worse uh, I've never known such shoddy actors it, it was total amateur hour and then I couldn't believe how outrageous he was he would walk around an attempt to molest the girls. It was disgusting. If they had been my children, I would have severely punished him. I mean, who on earth wants to watch a film about people being eaten? Did you know he actually used a dead body? I can't believe it. We all thought it was a fake. Uh, I believe Matthew um, or Mr. Alday headed out uh, to find some scummy little hole to live in I believe. Uh, he spent all of his budget, every penny he had on this film and he made nothing. But that's what you get for being an egotistic, drunken, let's face it, just a disgusting man. I can't, I can't believe it. The crew was like a family to me. My brother, my brother is my family. Do you have anything to say in response to these accusations, Mr. Alder? I, I need to think for a bit. Can we, can we cut? You okay? 
Are you okay there, Matthew? No, I need, need more to, to drink. I think you, you've got a few drinks there already, Matthew. I've only got two. Okay, just, not... just mind your step, Matthew. Oh, try not to... Uh... Are you okay? You're a bit unsteady on your feet there, aren't you? I'm, I'm fine. Are you sure? Listen, if I wasn't sure, do you think I'd be out here on beautiful day wearing my hat? I don't think so. That's true. Okay. Oh, Matthew. I'm just a bit concerned for you. Are you okay there? Oh, Matthew. Are you okay? No. God damn me. God damn tree, the whole world's out to get me. Hey, this is him, I'm afraid. Uh. 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 Everything. I had all, you know, I had the, the money, I had the house, I had a few dogs, don't know what happened to them, I the think they got run over. Ugh. You know, people don't see the real me, they see the fake me, yeah? They, they, all they see, all they see is this cage. They don't see the person inside the cage and I wanna, I wanna I'm, I'm, I'm a bird, I'm a bird in the cage. He's got his wings clipped so he, he can't fly out. The cage has got an open top for my ideas to go, but it's got nowhere for the body, for the soul to move. I wanna, I wanna, oh, oh, it's open. I can, I can come out the cage. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna fly free. I'm so bad outside the, I feel, maybe I'll be, maybe I'll be able to move on with my, with my life. Oh, oh. Oh. Careful, careful. Uh, Mr. Alday, um, what do you what do you think you'll do now? What are your plans for the future? I don't know. I thought I had it all figured out. Could have got myself cool, some goats. I just don't understand where it all went wrong. I had fun making this film, so surely people would have fun watching it. I, just, I can't understand just why nobody wants to watch it. Do you think maybe, Mr. Alday, it's because you uh, gave yourself to high expectations for the film. Your previous films have historically been great successes, haven't they? And I understand the added pressure of building upon that legacy, which is maybe something you felt you had to do. Um, and maybe you're just trying to make sure that they're as good as the previous films, not just as good as the previous films, but better. Maybe you just hyped yourself up a little bit too much and had tunnel vision on how good you thought it was going to be. And then perhaps at this point, or just for this film, you had the vision, but not the means. Could that be it? Best like Lanza. I don't think it'd be a quick film. Sure, in my eyes, this wasn't as perfect as I wanted it to be. Maybe I was just too focused on the concept to consider its feasibility. But failure is a natural part of growth and improvement. Next time, I'll consider not only my own everyone else's capabilities. The next film will be a good one. I can just tell it. Well, Matthew, if you don't mind me saying, I think you've really matured in your outlook on things over the course of this documentary. I was expecting to have to do at least three more, to be honest. Um, to think all you really had to do was destroy your body and, and ridicule yourself to get to this point. Well, I think that's what they call the tournament. Feel the burning in her lungs Clear her head Do you know what Sarah meant? When she said you be my guest